So this patient's coming in for a rapidly accelerating um, inflamed cyst at the back of her neck. She's had this once before and it's had to be drained. And so unfortunately, again, started to swell. You said about a week ago, yes. started to get bigger. And then she was seen in clinic. She was put on some Keflex. It's come down just a little bit. You, it's hard to feel how swollen it is, but it's tense through here. So again, this is gonna be an infected lesion. Uh, so we're gonna make an effort to sort of freeze this. We're gonna put uh, anesthetic in along the actual line here. Um, I'm working with another Dr. Jane today. And will the anesthetic work really well here? Um, what do you think? Mm, possibly not because yeah. of the infection. Yeah, and what does the infection do? How come it doesn't work as well? because of the pH. Yeah, pH was an acid base issue. Mm -hmm. The problem is the acidity of it impairs the ionization of the lidocaine, so it can't get into the actual cell, right. and that's why it doesn't work as well. Right. But you still want to be trying to freeze this as best we can. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna feel a poke here. A little poke, I apologize. And I want to be very superficial here, so I want to barely put the bevel in. I want to see it blanching if I can. You okay? Because okay. the problem here is if we get into the capsule proper, um, while we sometimes do that a little bit, it just causes pressure and distension and just causes her more discomfort. So generally I want to see that happening. What about instead doing a circumferential block? Would that work well here? So obviously freezing all the way around it. Mm, I don't think so again because the problem with that is sometimes it does, but you don't know where the infection starts and stops. So even though it looks like you can look and say, oh, it's not that red over there. The difficulty is it's not always the case. So you can do, and obviously freezing, if people have never had anesthetic, you can say, oh, she's breathing. Freezing is not comfortable. So you're not, even though your effort is to try to be saving the patient as much discomfort as possible, doing a large circumferential block is no fun. I feel a little poke here. Just breathe as best you can. Good job. You're doing well. And in this particular case, Dr. Jane, can we take this capsule out? It's gonna be very friable and yeah. won't be possible to. So in these cases, this is where we wanna just make sure we open this up, clean it out, so that it has a chance to settle down that we can go back in and take it out properly down the road. Mm -hmm. You know, there could be an argument about doing that before, obviously, since she's had it recur on her. Good job. I'm almost done making things uncomfortable for you. Very good. So does that hurt when I do that? No. No pain there at all? The other thing that's hard in this particular area, the nape of the neck where you have all these baby hairs, we've clipped them. And from some suggestions actually from people online, we use gel now to pad that back down. Um, but it is a hard area in and of itself. So this might get a little bit messy, but we're gonna clean all of that up afterwards. So this is our, we wanna have a lot of four by fours on hand. Just take that there for me. This is our number 11 blade. You okay? You're okay? Yeah. Yeah, you are. I feel pressure here. You can see how that's oxidized. Yeah. So there's some communication with the surface. Pressure there, you okay? Breathe as best you can.
she is being a trooper because that's uncomfortable. It's hard to avoid that type of pain because we're obviously exerting pressure across a big area. So even if you have a, a big, big sort of circumferential block here, that can be difficult to differentiate, to, to eliminate, I should say. I'm getting there, just give us a sec. So this is definitely membrane. Mm -hmm. The question becomes, can we tease some of that out? Mm -hmm. You okay? It's not hurting when I tug on that. So what we'll try and do now is clean this out as best we can. And we use the curette to see if we can break down some of these adhesions. Just gonna put a little bit more pressure on this, just bear with me. Oh. Just swab that, just take that off for me. So you can see a little bit more purulence with that oh. one. Take this curette. It's not hurting too much. You can see there, that's all membrane. Yeah. But this is the difficulty with the ones in between that are just on the verge where they've gotten infected. So we can sometimes go after them a little bit. See if we can get enough of the actual membrane out. You're okay? Yeah. So this would be one that if I had a number 15 blade, it'd be a little bit easier to work with here. The, 11, the number 11 is great for piercing, but not for such for finer work. You can see what, well, you see when you break down a loculation, oh. right, you open up. Mm. Is that hurting? Yeah. Yeah, I'll see if I can add a bit more freezing to there, see if that works a bit better. So this is always a limitation when you're trying to do more aggressive breakdowns. We're poking here. So now the capsule is broken down, so we're not distending the capsule anymore. So I can see if I can freeze in behind it. Is that hurting as much when I do that? No. So now I'm going to irrigate it and then see if we can, and so this material that's in our hair here, we're going to clean all of that out afterwards. So generally when I do this, I want to be putting this in different directions because I'm just trying to irritate the wall and get as much of this out as we can.
not hurting. See how that's membrane there? Yeah. Difficulty just with it again being when it's more friable, it sort of breaks apart too easy, doesn't hang on tight enough, and that's why you have difficulty getting that out. You can see mm -hmm. it sitting there. So again, then the argument becomes, why bother doing this? You know, so, but if we can get lucky, I don't mean in terms of opening up, that has to happen, but generally try to take out as much as possible. Because sometimes we'll take out enough that it doesn't reform, the body will resorb it. But a lot of these, if we don't take out the entire membrane, they come back and that's why we'll have to go back in when it's healed and then take it out properly. And a lot will dictate how much this we can do is again, how good the anesthesia can be, is the anesthetic working well because of the field that we're dealing with, all that stuff. This is also, also why we'll be packing this one. So we don't recurrently pack anymore, mm -hmm. um, unless you're dealing with like a post-op abscess, something like that. Mm -hmm. But overnight, when you either think there's more loculations in there or you don't have good blood um, you know, hemostasis, so it's bleeding a lot, mm -hmm. then you want to pack overnight mm -hmm. so that this has a chance to break down into that capsule. And there's definitely more cystic material that's in there. It's just, you know, breaking apart on me. And we may find overnight that then when we go to take that out, that there's sort of larger pieces of the membrane that are broken down overnight. Okay? Yeah, just it's it's in these ones this is a spot where you'll find that there's a lot you know it's a bigger capsule than you think or a bigger area that you think so you get I'm gonna irrigate it again then see how we did that last time. hurting too much. Mm -hmm.
So the difference being when this has not been an inflamed or infected um, field, usually once you get, in, and people who've watched these videos can see lots of this type of stuff, once you get a hold of the actual membrane, you can tease it out and it'll withstand more uh, trauma to it. And you can dissect down along it and get it out. But this is what happens with these ones. It just doesn't have that strength, so it keeps breaking apart, um, holding on too tight in certain areas, loosening up too, too much in others, breaking apart too much in others, and it just, you get this piecemeal attempt, so. Yeah, and that's what it becomes difficult as well because when it's inflamed like this, the membrane's also three times as big or four times as big because it's gotten mm -hmm. so swollen. So you start to talk about a big area, and this is why she's actually got, you know, thankfully the anesthetic's working okay. In a lot of these cases, despite even adding extra, they'll be uncomfortable. And, and I can't do this because it's just not reasonable. You can't make the patient super, super uncomfortable. So then we're really forced to rely on doing the packing overnight and then. Hopefully the next day some of this breaks off and we can get it out. Just gonna put one last little pressure here. Let's see if we can. Doesn't seem too bad. All right. So now I'm gonna pack this. I'm just gonna put some ribbon gauze in that. I know what I should. So here again, we're gonna do this just overnight. I'm gonna see her back tomorrow, and then we're gonna take this out, and then we won't be putting it back in. So she's got some anesthesia in right now, so this isn't too, too bad. But in the past, like when I was at your stage, we used to pack these for weeks on end, and mm -hmm. people don't have anesthetic in, and this is uncomfortable, really uncomfortable. And the studies show that it actually doesn't help healing to any great degree. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the use of antibiotics? Should we put her on antibiotic? It for four days and yep. say continue. Yeah, I think she continued. Days. But let's say she wasn't on any, would you put her on one? Um, not sure. So typically you don't have to when we're opening it up. Opening it up. You tolerating that okay? Yeah. But these are areas where sometimes I'll wimp out, like when it's around the brain, the neck, these type of things, you just want to make sure it doesn't get secondarily infected. Mm -hmm. right, do you want to clip it right here first? and then clip it down by the site. Yeah. Yep, perfect. Good. All right, so she's gonna clean you up a little bit, and then we'll book you back in to see you tomorrow.